strikes by my window It's my chest right in the morning Like a warning Could have slept here for days Everybody, happy Friday! Happy Friday again to those that listened to my um, show earlier today at twelve o'clock. It's four o'clock GMT time, um, and I'm led to believe it's eleven o'clock somewhere else in the world, <laughs> and probably at different times wherever you're tuning in. So I've got a very special guest today. It's my first chance to go across the pond and various other places to uh, to Canada, and we're going to chat to Paul Centre Moore who is the VP of Latin America of Tarsus Group. Tarsus Group being one of my community patrons, so I'd like to thank and also like to thank Hive Group, 19 Group, SISO, Easy Fares, Smart Digital, and my latest community patron, uh, Rev Rusney, who are um, doing some great things in insurance. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Paul. Good afternoon, Paul. Good afternoon, Dan. How are you? Thanks for I'm having me. I'm very well. I'm very well. We're also streaming to Facebook as well because I thought, why not? So, um, sure. Anyone that's uh, around and watching by Facebook, thank you. And also, if you're watching on demand because you can get didn't get a chance to watch live, I don't know why. <laughs> what else would you be doing? Um, <laughs> thank you very much. And also in audio as well when I get time to put it in into an audio podcast. So, Paul, very exciting. A number of reasons, as I chatted to you before. <laughs> You definitely have the best name of any guest, <laughs> and I've done over a hundred of these. I looked up the true definition of your surname, and uh, it's, that's, it's fantastic. I mean, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I, I honestly didn't have a lot to do with it. I didn't choose it. You didn't change um, it. You didn't change yeah. it to a more. It actually is I, your name. <laughs> it is it is my name yeah and funny enough it's actually very much a quebecois name it's not uh french even though it's it's obviously french okay. so um there is a saint amour in in france in the jura region just below yeah. beaujolais and it has its own appellation contrôlée and when i went there long one time backpacking through europe showing my passport they were all amazed because they couldn't believe someone had the same name whereas in canada yeah, it's, it's certainly not common, but um, there are more there are more Saint Amours here than there are in Paris, for instance. Good for you. I'm thinking of changing my name after this. And also, um, <laughs> for those of you that follow you on LinkedIn, they will know that your LinkedIn profile picture. Which what are you on a beach? Um, I'm in a, on a small island in Georgian Bay, in northern Ontario. Very nice. Was that well, probably not recently, right? A good a, some time ago. <laughs> um, no, it was last summer. It was like the only vacation one could have. Uh, go to a very small island with only five sure. people on it. Well, hopefully you can go back there in the not too distant future. So um, we're here to talk today, Paul, in, in, as you're in your role as uh, VP of Latin America Tarsus to talk about the recent acquisition of Expo Tendo. Um, but before we get into all that exciting stuff, um, I like to sort of bring my guests to life and understand a bit about their background. Um, it says on your LinkedIn profile, which I've, which I've downloaded, uh-huh. that you've, uh, you've worked in Latin America for over 20 years and you've probably been in the industry for that, obviously, that period of time. Can you sort of describe, just bring to life your ex, your experience in the events industry and also your passion for it? Sure. Uh, so yeah, so it's it's actually close to thirty years. I moved to Mexico oh. in nineteen ninety one, uh, originally with the Canadian Foreign Service. So I was a trade commissioner. Um, so like. DTI for you guys in in the UK, um, and I uh, was had a bunch of sectors that I was responsible for. It was around the time of NAFTA was coming in, and 
as a trade commissioner, part of the thing you do is organize Canadian pavilions at trade shows. Yeah. So that was my first entree into, into trade shows. Well, I did a bit here when I was at the head office in Ottawa. And um, yeah, so I stayed when my posting was over in 1994. Mexico was booming because of NAFTA. And I chose for personal reasons and professional reasons to stay yep. in Mexico. And um, a trade show company hired me. And I have been doing this now since uh, the end of 1994, so 26 years. Wow, that's a that's a long time. Now, if you're in a, <laughs> if you're in an industry um, for that long, and ultimately, okay, you've obviously had different roles and responsibilities, but I guess you know, in the main, in the same industry, um, what what drives your passion? What why are you still excited to do what you do within this industry? Uh, well, obviously, because Tarsus bought us a few years ago, and it's I mean, an yeah. absolute pleasure to work for Doug Emsley yeah, and, uh, and be part of a great company like Tarsus. But no, I mean, it's the same industry, but it's very, very different. If you look yeah. at how our portfolio has evolved over the the 26 years, because, you know, at the end, the Krauss and Tarsus are now, it's now the same company. Um, sure. You know, we've done, we've done lots. At one point in time, during the boom of technology, we were probably 85% of our shows were in technology, telecom and IT. Um, you know, we've done now where we don't have any in that industry and we're very big in industrial and manufacturing and energy and, and environment and renewables. So it's very, very different, um, even though it is, you know, the same, you're putting on shows. The show sure. business certainly in Mexico has changed a lot over this time. Um, you know, it was, it was very lesser developed in the early yep. 90s didn't have very many venues you know things were very different um and you know so that's that's evolved um we also work this is one of our specialties is working with partners around the world so yeah. you know over the years i've worked with had the, the great pleasure to work with many of the the big players um you know from around the world done lots of different shows get to travel to see those shows in in the us and europe yeah. um you know so i think i i think think of it as as being constantly changing and in Mexico and now the rest of the world gets to experience it with COVID but in Mexico yep. we we like to have the occasional crisis and drama so we get <laughs> H1N1 you know yep. screwed up our schedule SARS was a little bit yep. um you know we get earthquakes we Lovely. get our own homemade um devaluations and economic crisis you should work, in, you in should work the tourist board you're doing a great job <laughs> <laughs> but Mexico is an amazing place. I mean, yeah. I went there for three years and I'm still working there 29 yeah. years later, even though today I'm sitting in Toronto. Sure. Good for you. So, you know, a lesson from that is that, you know, sometimes the grass might be greener on the other side, but actually, you know, it's ever evolving, right? Your role and, and responsibilities. Um, Latin America. Mm -hmm. I, it, truthfully, it's not, I'm, I'm relatively well educated, but it's not a, <laughs> uh, a region that I know tremendously well um can you sort of bring it to life and you know also unfortunately i've got to talk to you about how um covid generally not from an exhibition perspective i was looking up stats and and it doesn't look like it's been <laughs> <laughs> um how's it been <laughs> um Okay, so Latin America is a uh, very interesting uh, part of the world. Obviously, yeah. I, I really like it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not all one thing. You know, Brazil is this big monster that speaks Portuguese. So, um, sure. you know, where the rest of us maybe speak Spanish. Um, you know, distances are very, are very big. Uh, a lot of people think, you know, we're really close to Brazil or Argentina and things like that. And actually we're not at all. Um, so while it's, it's one, you know, region because of culture and, and partially language, it's really very, very uh, different countries. Sure. Um, you know, Mexico and we are part of North America. We're much closer to the U.S. and Canada than we are to Brazil or Argentina or, or the rest of the countries in South America. I mean, Central America, you know, like like for Mexico, the U.S. is the rich country for the to the north. For Central Americans, Mexico is the rich country to the north. So sure. we do do things in Central America to bring in buyers from Central America. But um, 
you know, but the, but the rest, and we from Northern and South America, but really it's, it's not, it's not like Europe. It's not like North America. It's not even like Asia. We're not all that connected just because sure. it's quite far apart and we all have our equally different problems at different times. Yeah. Which, which makes sense <laughs> if the company obviously wants to expand into a different region to have partners on the ground and have that local intelligence is critical. Yeah, I mean, uh, for a while, in right now, Tarsus doesn't have anything uh, really, except for we do the label uh, summit in in South America. We're not doing anything currently in in the rest of Latin America. However, in my time at Kraus, we did have um, offices in um, Argentina, Brazil, and Colombia. So I did sure. help. We were we helped them uh, learn about you know the systems and how we do shows. So I have done. Um, I have been to most a lot of the countries down there, and I've done shows. Sure in Brazil, Argentina, and Colombia. And in terms of the impact of COVID, I just obviously had a quick read before we came on. Uh, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unfortunately... <laughs> so you shouldn't do that on a Friday afternoon, Dan. No, I know, I know. But, uh, you know, you've got to do some research, haven't you? Or at least pretend to. So um, COVID does discriminate, you know, and obviously there's a lot of poverty in all regions of the world. But um, obviously, uh, also some of the regions that you operate in, and from what I understand, it's been hit pretty hard. Would that be a correct assumption? Yes, yes. Uh, COVID has been quite devastating to um, to most of the region, um, yeah. certainly to to Mexico. Um, you know, we unfortunately have a, a president who underplayed the um, you know the the virus for many many months. Uh, sure. He also chose to not um, supply, not provide a peso of subsidies to any of um, the companies or for right. the people who are out of work. And as you say, Mexico you know, has 60 million people who probably live, you know, week to week and they need to work because there's no unemployment. There's no, no concept of furlough or anything like that. <laughs> No, there's nothing. Really? Right, okay. um, you know, the companies have to, you know, pay for everything. There's been none. There hasn't even been a tax holiday in, in Mexico. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I guess he did come down with COVID on Sunday. So we'll see if that's actually just desserts yeah. for him. But, um, you know, it's it has it has been tough. The industry, the you know, that's overall. The, the, so Mexico is big, obviously, in, in tourism, you know, people yep. coming to the beaches of Mexico, uh, you know, oil and um, the remises is called the remittances from Mexicans who live in the U.S. mainly. Those are the three biggest sources of, um, of foreign um, direct income coming in and or biggest exports. And, um, you know, oil keeps going, but tourism has been decimated. So, uh, yeah, it's not it's not great. I mean, when when yeah. everything shut down last spring with all the manufacturing shutting down, too, that definitely hurt Mexico. Now manufacturing operations are back up for the most part. So, um Economy is going, but but yeah, you'll be in certain parts of Mexico. I just came back after being there for a month, and you know, certain parts, um, you know, the streets are empty, like you see in in lots yep. of other countries around the world. But then certain parts of Mexico City and and certain beaches, you'd look and say, "There's no COVID. People are just yep. out and about." Yeah, it's interesting to get a different uh, opinion because obviously over here in the UK, I mean, the government has has obviously invested billions in the furlough scheme and this, that, and the other. Um, but obviously some people are still be left behind, specifically freelancers in, a, in the event community and people that set up businesses around the time the pandemic struck. But, you know, it's, I know things are relative and you look off, you've obviously got to look after your, your own individual, but, you know, there are people elsewhere that are not getting any support. Um, the exhibition in industry specifically, mm -hmm. I was having a look at the UFI report, which came out about Latin America, about the region um, not so long ago. I mean, the stats were about obviously pre-COVID, but it seemed like to me there was a lot of positive news coming out of that region. Can you sort of bring, uh, we'll get on to talk about Tarsus in, in a second, but can you bring that the, the industry to, to life a bit more? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the trade show industry in Mexico or in the region is is doing really well. Um, you know, there's been issues. Brazil and Argentina have had their economic issues. Um, that make it challenging for international, especially because, you know, reporting back in dollars. But overall, um, Latin America is doing well. The industry has been booming. I mean, 2019 was was our best year. It was probably the best year for the industry. You know, 10 years of growth. Um, you know, now we've 
renegotiated NAFTA. So that's, yeah. you know, stable access to the markets. Mexico has, Mexico in particular has free trade agreements with more countries than anyone else in the world. So, I mean, you know, things were going well in, in the whole region, um, things were growing and then, and then COVID hit. Yeah. So, um, you know, but there's still lots of pent up demand. I mean, we, you know, switching to us, we have 12 shows more or less a year um, in many different industries. And, you know, everyone is, is very, very optimistic that, that things will come back once they can reopen. So in, in Mexico, in just the whole industry was shut down until I guess about September. Yep. And then it slowly reopened, depending some of some facilities are still hospitals, so they didn't reopen, obviously. Uh, but, you know, Guadalajara reopened, uh, Sintermex reopened, the World Trade Center in Mexico reopened. We did a show, actually, at the end of October live, okay. um, which was, was great. It was a great experience for us and staff was excited to, to get back to work and, and the exhibitors were happy, um, you know, obviously less people than, than in the sure. past. We did something similar to what's happening in the world. We joined forces with a competitor who had a similar type event. So we put three in one, uh, which is actually what Tarsus is doing in Orlando in two yes. weeks and um, in the fashion industry. So we, um, you know, that, that was good. Everything is shut down again for the most part, at least in Mexico City. We're back to the red stoplight, which means expos can't happen. But, um, you know, I, I, we're, we're optimistic and the industry is optimistic that, sure. that things will reopen. And what type of sectors? Um, you said 12 shows. Can you just give us a flavor of um, who they serve? Sure. Yeah. So we or does we have industrial manufacturing. We have our two biggest shows, Plasti Imagen and Manufactura, which are for the plastics and the manufacturing industry, which are both very big in in Mexico. So serve lots of industries: auto parts, aerospace, um, you know, the white goods, things like that. And then we have a division that's energy and renewable energy and environment. We have a few shows in in that sector. Um, and then we have our commercial division, which has a bit, that's where our restaurant show is. That's where Tenderos will go. That's where we have a beauty show. Um, you know, we have a new one. Well, we haven't held it yet because it's been postponed twice because of COVID, but a new one with the rye on protected, protected horticulture. So everything around the greenhouse industry. Um, you know, so it's, yeah, it's infrastructure, manufacturing, yeah. energy, environment. And then okay. a bit of a mismatch. And Around sort of the pandemic last year, definitely in the UK, people were rushing to do their shows or at least keep in contact with their delegates and exhibitors virtually. Um, has that been the same over there as well or, or not? Yes, it has. Um, you know, there's been lots of platforms, both homegrown in Mexico and then obviously the international ones to do virtual shows. Uh, um, we have chosen to go the option of just providing content occasionally. Yep. Um, so in the fall, we did for all the shows that we couldn't do live. We had on the same dates. We did a few hours, um, you know, over the days of the show of content that was well received. Obviously we were like able to bring in people, you know, um, from other countries that probably would never would have come to the show. So that was, that was a good opportunity to expand the database. Um, you know, we've been staying and it helps us stay in touch with our exhibitors. Uh, sure. you know, we have another one actually next week on, on Manufactura and, um, and then we'd been focused because because Mexico has opened up sooner uh, than the most other countries. We've been focused on you know moving to a hybrid model for for okay. the spring into the summer. It's going to depend. Um, you know, a couple of those shows that we were hoping will be hybrid will probably end up being 100% virtual, given the situation in Mexico sure. right now. Uh, but we're uh, we're planning to to have our first live show for I mean that we know will happen for sure, as much as for sure exists in this world. But uh, May 30th and 31st Amazing. is one that we couldn't do last year. And it's in Guadalajara, which has been, is in a bit better shape than than Mexico City. Um, well, you know, and then we have- Sorry to interrupt you. I was gonna say, we'll definitely, we'll definitely do a live, a live segment, live from your show in May. That'd be fantastic. You for mentioned sure. hybrid. Now hybrid, you can line 10 people up and they could tell you, you know, 10 different things. What does hybrid mean to you in the context of your shows? 
Um, so what <laughs> our original plan for the hybrid was that we would be able to have a critical mass of Mexican companies who could participate in the show live. So we'll do a much yep. smaller floor plan of the show. We'll still get some attendees coming. We saw that at the end of October, as long as we're, we're not, um, you know, under the red stoplight is how the system works in Mexico. You know, people can come, you know, use following all the, the policies of, um, you know, good security and hygiene and, sure. and things. And um, then what we were gonna, we we're offering for our exhibitors who are unable to attend in person, that they would be able to participate, um, you know, digitally. And by that, they would have basically the option we want this, you know, there's a landing page, they get all their information, people can request meetings, you know, they could do live demos. And then we would transmit the content that will be happening live on the show floor to people who are unable to attend in person and they can sure. watch it and then watch it for you know most likely be streamed afterward yeah so, well yeah so you've got that continual engagement afterwards as well right okay so um you announced an acquisition or a mm -hmm. controlling stake um on monday was it i think yes monday Seems like a long week <laughs> Well, longer for you, you've been traveling. Um, tell us about it. Yeah, it's quite exciting. Uh, you know, uh, new business mergers and acquisitions has not been easy under COVID. It's been a lot of time last year doing due diligence and, and talking to people and nothing had really come to pass until the Senderos. We'd actually been in discussions since just before COVID started. So basically last January um and yep. with with the seller it's an interesting uh show it's somewhat related to to us with expo restaurantes because tenderos the little corner stores do have lots of um sell lots of food and beverage so it's uh, there are some uh overlap on exhibitors but it's uh um you know it's a sector that it doesn't really exist in canada i'm not sure if it exists in the uk but they're these little tiny it's not the corner stores that are like the established corner stores yeah. it's really it's really almost like an informal tiny spaces people do them they're mainly in residential areas so you have everyone has a few close to to where you live um they you know people do pop-ups like in their garage or in the front room of their house and then you know otherwise they'll rent a little space on a on a street front and um you know they become your um your convenient store you get to know the owners they often provide credit to people it's you know you find out information what's going on some of them lots of them deliver so it's yeah. really interesting because during covid they didn't shut down when people were you know scared to go out and go to big supermarkets and things like that you could go to sure. your neighbor tienda or tendero and get what you need in in food and beverage smokes you know that sort of thing so it's uh it's a show that was held once by the the prior owners um and uh it was a re, you know huge success when they did it at the end of 2019 and we um are excited about bringing it into the tarsus portfolio so yeah, that's really different. I mean, I obviously, yeah, we have local convenience stores and stuff here. Um, so the these owners are going to come into the show and mm -hmm. sort of promote their. How, how, what are they? What's their objective? And who who will they meet? Okay, so the exhibitors and sponsors will be all of the suppliers to these little stores. Oh, okay. So it's all right, about the food and beverage and cleaning yeah. products. And, um, you know, lots of them, at least one near my place in Mexico City, also has fresh produce and, and fresh meat. Um, you know, they buy from the central market in Mexico. And so there'll be, there'll be wholesalers as well, because it's an industry, the tenderos are, are supplied by, you know, a few big wholesalers as well. Um, but just to give you a perspective, there are over a million of them in Mexico. Oh, wow. And they say <laughs> about 40% yeah. of total retail industry goes through these, these tenderos. So um, yeah. it's, it's something that's really big. I mean, it's the biggest, they're the biggest buyers of you know most of the biggest brands like coca-cola bimbo the big bread company things like that they they can't survive without these so um and they're all individuals so, they're all sort of like family owned okay uh, and really, yeah interesting yeah model. so we um the in the first edition they had over ten thousand come for a one-day event 
um, given COVID restrictions yeah. on distancing. I don't think we're all well, one, we're switching to a two day event, but we'll see on the, what the limitations are on, on numbers at the point in time when we do the show in August, but we're- um, It's in August. It's in August. Yes, yeah, beginning of August, 4th and 5th of August, we'll do it live this year. And, uh, you know, we're expecting a good number of these people to come in. They're also, it's, it's, there's lots of interest in helping them professionalize things, you know, payment plans um, sure. and things like that, doing things more electronically. It's an industry that um, lots of the communication is done via WhatsApp. So it's not, you know, that's also informal. So it's getting their yep. numbers, you know, the, the individual suppliers are sending out promotions via WhatsApp. You know, there's, you know, lots of different things like that. So it's, it's going to be interesting. I think um, we'll be able to help it grow. And it's actually a show that could exist in probably every city in Mexico with more than a million people. Okay. I was going to say, so actually, um, Danica Tormelin, if I pronounced her name correctly, um, <laughs> I commented and she's put, um, will the previous owners stay on? Because typically, well, not typically, sometimes when you have an acquisition, they might stay for a period of time on an earn out or whatever. What, just, just give us a view on how that's going to work. Sure. Hello, Danica. It's nice to uh, see you there. Okay. Oh, you know each other. Uh, there you go. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's actually interesting. So it was it was originally done uh, by a marketing agency with one of the partners of the marketing agency was the lead guy who, who developed the show. So we bought the show from the marketing agency and that um, lead partner in the show from the marketing agency has left and he will be our partner. Uh, okay. since he's the one with all the experience. So the, the previous owners per se are gone, sure. but the expertise from those owners is staying on. Yeah. And he Which is important. Our, yeah, and he becomes our minority partner. So you mentioned that, um, and thank you Danica for that question. You mentioned um, that this show could be in every city in a, you know, in Mexico, or in Mexico I think you said. Yep. Um, what other plans have you got, not just for this show, but for the region? Um, and well, it's it's a good question. The, the the issue that we have of spreading out in the region is we would want to have some sort of infrastructure because trying to run a show just from Mexico without a local infrastructure would not wouldn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. So um, so far, even though we've been trying, Doug, trust me, I've been trying um, to find uh, an infrastructure to yeah. to uh, to buy somewhere in the rest of the region. We um, we have been unsuccessful thus far. And I think given COVID, we'll probably wait a bit. But it's certainly I'm, I'm quite positive there are sure. these types of stores everywhere in Latin America. So it is it is something that we could do. But it is, you know, because of the wholesale and the informal part of the industry, you know, you really need to to have someone on the ground who's doing, yeah. who's working with those wholesalers and those uh, things. So unfortunately now, Dan, after, after this podcast, there's, we're probably going to be launched in five other countries in Latin America in the next <laughs> two weeks by other people. And we've lost our opportunity. Well, I'm going to do that as an aside, actually. It's like, well, this is what I do. I get information from everyone and then I do my own thing. Um, when you say infrastructure, do you mean venues or? No, I mean, um, you know, basically, and it's sort of Tarsus's um, MO is buying into a, an organizer in another okay. country. I mean, like they did with with EJ Krauss, um, yep. you know, where I worked before, they bought first half of us and then they bought the rest of us. And it's something that Tarsus has done in, in a few other countries around the world. So in a, yep. a perfect opportunity, if there's anyone in Latin America listening, if you have three or four or five shows and, and staff and you uh, are looking for a, an international partner, call me. And uh, I, I take 10% commission <laughs> on any deal for setting this up. <laughs> You can negotiate uh, that with Douglas. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you've obviously got a lot going on. So that's that's fantastic. Um, talk to us about the future. Your sort of your views of the future. So obviously you're planning a show in May. Um, what's what's your hopes and expectations? What's your crystal ball telling you? <laughs> uh, well, we're really hopeful that we are going to be able to do most of our shows live this year. Uh, I think 21 is still going to be challenging. Oh, sorry, my dog has just decided to come visit me. Oh, um, and um, so we, uh, you know, we're 
uh, there are still issues with the shows that we had planned before before August, basically, other than the, the May show that, you know, in, in our case, if if we if it's a show that's almost completely Mexican in on the supply side with exhibitors and sponsors, I think it's definitely doable after even after April this year. I mean, uh, but if it's a show, which is the case for most of our shows that has a lot of international participation, due to travel restrictions and things, it's going to be complicated. So we're still, unfortunately, um, postponing a couple of shows yep. that, that were in the first part of the year. Uh, already found dates for one. We're negotiating for another one. Um, we're about to announce a change on, on one, which will be our third postponement, unfortunately. And it's a launch, so we haven't done it yet. Right. Uh, okay. Um, but we're very, very optimistic um, from August on. I mean, the May one is an exception because it's, well, A, it's almost June because it's May 30th and 31st. Yep. It's an industry that really needs to, to have a show um, and it is 100% Mexican. So, yep. And it's in Guadalajara, which Guadalajara is in a bit better situation than, than Mexico City right now with COVID. And they, they actually had a show last week. Uh, so they've already reopened um, oh, fantastic. after this second closing. So, um, but, you know, from August on, we have quite a busy calendar. I think, you know, we all realize that they're not going to be gangbuster shows. It's not going to be 2019 all over again. But, you know, from all of our research with the, with the exhibitors, and again, in research with our, our visitors, people need to get back to work in Mexico. It's, no. it's necessary. Um, and we saw it in, in our show in October when things were still not great, obviously, well, before they got worse. But um, in Mexico, they've never really gone down. Yeah. The first wave is still happening. Uh, and so uh, we found from our exhibitors, they were just very, very happy to get an opportunity to be in front of clients. Yeah. And um, and the, the visitors were happy. You know, lots of rules. Everyone had to have a mask. Exhibitors had to have a mask and a face shield, you know, or protective glasses. Yeah. We, you know, it was limited, obviously, the number of people in. Security was constantly breaking up any any groups. It was a food show. It was a restaurant show and no tasting. Everything had to be individually wrapped. You know, you can't do the, yeah. the tasting, which is normal. So that, that was a bit different. But we had education, you know, all spread out on the show floor. Uh, and, and we had an exhibitor. I mean, crazy. He, he never participated in this show before and called us up in, in January and said, you know, I really liked it. I want to be back. And what other shows do you have that I could be at? And that I mean, is, that's the dream, isn't it? For all organized. Yeah. It just shows that, you know, trade shows have the ability to get the economy back on track. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've had a challenge over here in the UK to get the government to recognize that. Um, but, you know, that those sort of stories are can only give us hope and confidence that things are going to open up again and be positive um mm -hmm. appreciate your busy chap i'm going to let you uh let you disappear okay um, well thanks very much it's been an absolute pleasure and love to have you back on again and hopefully cross fingers the show happens in may yeah we'll we can go live. live we can go live to the show which is a new segment i'm going to be launching so thank you everyone for watching both demand audio all that sort of stuff um Paul Centimore, my special guest from uh, from Canada, VP of um, Latin America Tarsus. Thank you so much. No, thank you, Dan. It's been my pleasure. And uh, I'm just going to pop you. We'll have a little chat afterwards. So just hold fire. Okay. <laughs> thanks. Okay, thanks, guys. That was uh, a really good chat. Second one of the day. I've got Karina Bauer coming up uh, of IMEX on Monday uh, at 5 o'clock. Um, I will post. That's in a, a special event page so please join me for that i've got all sorts of other content coming up so um look out for my content on linkedin so listen everybody stay safe have a great weekend and thank you for joining uh, thanks once again to all my patrons you can watch all of my content on youtube just search dan Asor, and i will post clips of this film um in the coming days thank you so much Strikes by my window, hits my chest right in the morning.